I wanted to bring you a brief update from Europe and let you know the latest craziness going on in batshit bonkers Britain. Uh, we're just emerging from lockdown, a formal lockdown, into a new tiered system. Uh, much like you good guys in America, none of us really know what the tiered system will be. It seems to be lockdown in all but name and much like in certain states of America, politicians are making up rules as they go along. I'd like to give you a few examples, if I may. We're getting told what will remain open when we come out of lockdown. And for example, shisha bars, which are places people go to smoke those long pipe things, can remain open, but they must not serve shisha. <laughs> so shop can open, but it mustn't serve shisha. And I would say to all of us, of course, one of the things we need to keep asking is, and this helps us not spread COVID, how? How is it that shops can open but not sell the thing that they sell? Other rules that the British state is wanting to impose on its own people for what is a mild seasonal flu. <laughs> Pubs, bars and restaurants in some tiers will open, but you're only going to be allowed to order a drink if you order a substantial meal. And they're now going to define for regular British people, people capable of, you know, functioning, going to school, having a job, having children, being married. They're going to tell us what a substantial meal is in order that we are allowed to order a drink in a pub, a bar or a restaurant. It is not a packet of crisps and it is certainly not a plate of fries. That's the government now defining what we have to eat in order to be able to have a drink. That's happening right now in the UK again. Does COVID know if someone's only having a snack versus having a substantial meal? I know America can seem crazy and you guys are going through the worst of times, but I don't know if it is reassuring to know that the same is happening here in the UK where we're only going to be allowed to order a drink in certain areas of my country if our meal that we order is considered substantial enough. I mean, the craziness never ends. And just like I've seen um, your monsters pushing over there. Thanksgiving safety. I saw, um, I believe, Californian governors and others, Michigan, I believe, pushing this. Thanksgiving safety rules. I don't know if you've had a look at them. You've seen before, I think, no singing or shouting. One person serves the food. Um, no potluck style gatherings. Guests may um, guests should bring their own food and drinks. Keep pets away from guests. I mean, really, can you imagine the state, the American government, or rather governors of states, telling you what you're allowed to do inside your own homes for Thanksgiving? And of course, it's no coincidence that exactly the same is running in the UK, where we're being told what we're going to be allowed to do for Christmas. Families will be allowed to meet at Christmas, government confirms. I mean, it's a wonder, isn't it, how we manage to survive this stifling oppressiveness where they are absolutely coming for the things that we used to rely on being able to do. You know, the reason we have Thanksgiving, the reason we have Christmas, apart from being a celebratory affair or a religious festival of significance, the reason we have these things is because we want to come together to fill each other up. And we know best of all, our side knows that when we're together, that's when we feel better. And it's almost like these state governors, like the government in the UK and England and Scotland and Ireland and elsewhere, don't want us to come together, don't want us to feel better, because all the more easy to batter us down. And I will throw, if I may, to a clip, which I'm hoping we can show you, um, just yesterday in the UK, a 70, we're unsure if it's 72, 76, either way, 70 plus elderly lady stood with a sign outside Parliament, peacefully on her own, stood, I think she may have had one friend with her, asserting her freedoms, that she did not want to be locked down, that she would rather live her life. And the police came along, as you'll see in this clip, um, and the way they handled her was horrific. I mean, if that was my mother and they humili they spread eagled her, I mean, the humiliation level in itself was terrible. And then they threw her into the back of a police wagon and drove her off citing COVID regs. And of course, this speaks the, to the 
duality, the double standards of policing going on. There is a different policing for white people in the UK than there is, for example, if you're Black Lives Matter, you're allowed to gather in your thousands and protest. If you're a little white elderly lady stood politely with a sign, you get treated in an embarrassing manner and thrown in the back of a wagon. And you'll see in the clip as well that a MP, a member of parliament, an elected representative watches this and is, is outraged himself. He can't understand how this can possibly be happening in the UK today, that elderly ladies can be bundled into the back of wagons and driven off, effectively kidnapped by the state for speaking out against the narrative. And of course, I suppose the message is what happens in the UK tends to happen in America eventually as well. But of course, it is not all doom and gloom. If you would like more updates from me um, midweek, then please do text. You can text absolutely free on 88202. So in the, that's in the United States. You can text 88202, absolutely free, in partnership with the American Truth Project. And we will send updates just like this straight to your phone. And of course, you know, we should always say it is not that we need to agree. That's never been, I don't think, the ambition of any of us and certainly has never been the precursor to debate. This is about hearing truths that, of course, otherwise you aren't allowed to hear and securing networks of our own that we can look after as we all seek to hold on to each other through these tough times. And remember my three key words as we go through this sea of madness that we're all swimming through, that we have to resist, we have to defy, and we will prevail. We will build islands of sanity, and together we will prevail. So do join us at ATP and do text the letters KTH. That's the letters KTH, my name, Katie Hopkins. Text KTH to 88202 to get more updates like this to your phone absolutely free.